Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm really excited to see you all today for my presentation here. And uh, if, you, if you guys sense that I'm nervous, yes, I am. Usually, I end up sitting there facing this side. And today, I'm facing this side talking to you all. So today, I'm going to present on the topic of Couchbase as a service. Couchbase as a service is the model that we have adopted at DreamWorks, which has allowed us to reduce costs, cut delivery times, and increase our efficiency. So let's get started with my quick introductions. I am Naveen, Naveen Kumar Epa. I'm a DevOps engineer at Data Services team. My team is responsible for maintaining and deploying the databases that, uh, that our organization uses. My specialty is in NoSQL technology, which includes Couchbase, Cassandra, Mongo, Elasticsearch, Redis, and others. As you'll see, data is at the core of making digital movies, which means data services team is at the core of our business. So where do I work? I work for DreamWorks Animation, a global entertainment company based in Los Angeles, California. What we do? We are the creators of some of these greatest animated characters of all time. Our company was established in 1994. DreamWorks Animation is recognized as one of the most admired family entertainment brands in the world. We have produced 35 movies over the past 23 years. We have made over $14.5 billion worldwide at box office. Some of our all-time hits are Shrek, How to Train Your Dragon, Kung Fu Panda, Madagascar, and Boss Baby. We have also received three Oscars, 12 Cytic Awards, 41 Emmys, and numerous Golden Globes and Annie Awards. We have also been granted 59 patents. We have been pioneers in the animation technology for the past two decades, and we continue to be at the apex. Data is at our core. Unlike live action movies, animated movies are 100% computer generated movies, with key ingredient being data. Here are a few numbers to give you an idea of how much data we deal with. We have 22,000 core render farms running at our data centers, and these render farms are responsible for generating images that you see on the screen. It takes us five to seven years to produce a movie. Rendering is the longest process. We spend over 12 days of compute time to just render one second of the film that you see. Because we render each, each frame multiple times in different quality, we, we spend over 80 million compute hours on each movie. Around 350 terabytes of data goes into each movie that we produce. It takes, it takes half a billion files and over 250 billion pixels for each movie. We don't only deal with billions at box office, but also at our backend services. We get more than 3.6 billion hits every day on our services, which includes databases. To give you an idea how big that is, it is more than the number of search requests that Google process each day. Uh, during the crunch time right before we deliver our movie, we serve at a, at a pace of 110,000 transactions per second. Actually, I don't know, my slides got cut, so. We have more than 200 database clusters at DreamWorks. We support more than 15 different types of databases at DreamWorks, including Couchbase. Pretty much all the databases that are out in the market. This slide gives the facts of just one movie. But at DreamWorks, at any given time, we are working on five to seven different movies. Besides movies, DreamWorks is the largest TV animation studio in the world. We are also creating contents for theme park rides. So these facts illustrate how crucial our data services team is to our business, which is why it is very important for us to stay at the leading edge of the technology. As we have evolved over the years, we have also learned from our mistakes. Here are a few things that data services team has struggled in the past with. 
In the good old days, we used to deploy all our applications manually. This style of deployment is obviously prone to errors. We used to have dedicated hardware for uh, each database cluster that we had, and we would end up requiring new hardware when we had to deploy a new type of database. We used to have these large monolithic clusters, which, are, which used to serve a lot of different applications, and whenever there was an outage or if we needed to apply a patch, it would impact all our services. Sometimes our development environments do not match our production, because we might have installed a patch in one environment and, and forgot to do the same in the other. Cron jobs also caused us problems because they live on the same machines as the databases, and which means whenever, there's a, whenever the server crashes, we end up losing some functionality for backups and reporting. Scaling of these databases was very painful because we could scale only vertical. Monitoring of these databases was difficult too in the static infrastructure because if we had to move around the stuff, we had to change all the configurations. As you'll see in my coming slides, adopting to Couchbase as a service has allowed us to overcome all these problems. So we now have automated deployments, efficient resource usage and tracking, multi-tenancy, ease of management, monitoring and alerting, automated backups and restores, and elasticity, and there's this, the service discovery which got cut. How did we achieve Couchbase as a service? In order to achieve Couchbase as a service, we had to do two things. The first thing is we had to treat our data center as a cloud. Even though we are too big to move our data to the cloud, we still have the cloud mentality when we think about our local data center. We treat all our servers as cloud resources and, and provision them on demand. As we treat, because we treat our data center as a cloud, we can then treat our da databases as cloud native applications. So what is cloud native? Cloud native is an approach to building and running applications that fully exploits the advantage of a cloud computing model. So what are cloud native applications? For an application to be cloud native, it has to possess three important characteristics. It has to be containerized, it has to be dynamically orchestrated, and it has to be microservice oriented. Let's talk about these things in detail. Containerization. So containerization is a technique of encapsulating applications in container with their own operating environment, abstracting them from the operating system. There are few containerization technologies out in the market, and we chose Docker because Docker is the leading player in the market, and its ecosystem is growing daily. However, there are few limitations with these Docker containers. These Docker containers are meant to be stateless, which means when a container stops, all the data inside these containers is lost. But our databases need to be stateful which means our database containers need to be stateful. We cannot afford data loss when a container stops. So in order to make our containers stateful, in the past, we used to, we used to do port, uh, in the past, we used to host mount volumes with, and write the data onto these volumes. The problem with this type of approach is the data is local to the host, which means when a container dies, it has to be restarted on the same host and this do not meet a cloud native application, requirement of a cloud native application. So we now make you, to overcome this problem, we now make use of volume plugins, and uh, yeah, the, we, we now make use of Docker volume plugins, and there are several companies that provide the volume plugins, but we chose Portworks. Portworks provides us the distributed shared storage, and this allows us uh, to make our volumes portable. The other limitations with Docker containers is these containers are not routable, which means you cannot connect to this container from the external host. Of course, our databases need to be, our, our databases need connections to each other, and they had to be connected to the clients which are on the external host. In order to make our containers routable, in the past, 
we used to utilize port forwarding technique. We used to expose a container ports onto the local host. The problem with this type of approach is uh, that we would end up having port conflicts if any two applications required to use the same port on the host. To overcome this problem, we have, we have used this Docker feature called user-defined networks, and we assign each, each of our hosts with a specific subnet, and we then use Quagga routers to advertise the routes. By doing this, any machine in our studio can connect to any Docker container without a network overlay. The second important characteristic of a cloud-native application is it has to be dynamically orchestrated. Our, our, our orchestration process mainly handles five things. Scheduling. We make use of a custom scheduler that we built in-house to determine the, the optimal host for deploying our databases. So this scheduler looks at the CPU and memory usage to find the hosts that are least used. After we, de after we host our containers, we then make use of Chef to handle our deployment process. The Chef connects to the appropriate servers, downloads the right Docker images, and sets the runtime uh, configurations for the containers. Because all of our databases run as a highly available clusters, each node in the cluster should be able to discover each other node. We handle this by creating dynamic DNS entries, which result to, the, which result to all the nodes in the cluster. For any node to discover the other node in the cluster, all it has to do is to perform a DNS lookup. For monitoring, we make use of a third-party service called Datadog, and Datadog comes with the, uh, it includes with a feature called Auto Discovery feature, and this enables when a Docker container is started on the host, it is automatically configured for monitoring and alerting. We use a third-party tool called Rundeck, uh, which can schedule and run jobs on our databases. During our orchestration, uh, our, our orchestration process hand, uh, dynamically configures this Rundeck server with the cluster information. So during the time of deployments, uh, we create the jobs uh, automatically for, the, for that cluster. So this is the 10,000 foot view of our application deployment model. Uh, we, we kick off the orchestration process via a Jenkins job or a request to our API. And all uh, the requester needs to provide is he has to provide the number of nodes, the type of the environment, and the storage requirement. After the request is submitted, the Jenkins job will trigger the custom scheduler, and that looks for the uh, optimal host to launch our containers. Next, the chef client connects to the appropriate servers and deploys the application. It also connects to the Rundeck server to, for creating new jobs. Chef also creates DNS entries for service discovery, and it also creates a record in our service catalog, which is console. Once after the containers are successfully launched on the host, these containers connect back to the DNS for the cluster information so that the cluster can be initialized. Because we use Datadog uh, for our monitoring, as soon as the containers are launched, they're automatically registered for monitoring and, and, monitoring and alerting. This means the dynamic orchestration has configured the cluster to be completely operational. The cluster has been initialized. It has been, uh, it has been uh, configured for monitoring and alerting. And we have created the DNS entries uh, with which the clients can connect onto our servers. The third important characteristic of a cloud-native application is it has to be microservice-oriented. Generally, a microservice is, is, is referred as a front-end application or a stateless, applica stateless application rather than a distributed application like Couchbase. So what does a traditional microservice mean? The microservice architecture is a style of building applications as a suite of small, independently deployable services rather than building a giant monolithic application. We have taken we have taken this concept of microservices and applied to our databases as well. So our microcluster philosophy says 
to deploy a suite of small independently deployable clusters rather than building a large monolithic database cluster. As I mentioned in my previous slides, at DreamWorks we work at five to seven movies at a time. We consider each movie as a separate customer or a tenant. For each movie, we deploy over 25 different services, most of which include databases. For each of these services, we give a dedicated database clusters, and with this, we achieve true multi-tenancy. With this, with this style of architecture, we are, able, we, are, we are able to isolate not only the movies, but services as well. With this, with this smaller clusters, the impact of an outage is minimal. Only the data being served by that cluster is affected, making other artists continue working. And it allows, us, it allows other movies to remain online. Finally, because these clusters handle a small set of data, the, uh, the requests like reads and writes are very fast. So it may sound counterintuitive when I say managing of these hundreds clusters is easier than ma maintaining a large monolithic cluster. But as you can see, it makes us much more efficient and agile. As you, as you can see, the adopting to Couchbase as a service has allowed us to achieve all of our goals. We now have automated deployments. We, we deploy everything at a cost of single click. We are, uh, it allows us to use uh, we, it allows us to use our resources effectively because we spin up multiple containers on each host. Task of management is much easier. To prove my point, we are able to maintain over 200 database clusters with only four DBAs. We have achieved multi-tenancy, and the impact of an outage is minimal on our clusters. During the time of deployment, we ensure that the cluster is completely operational, configured for monitoring and automated backups. Our clusters are totally elastic. We can scale our clusters horizontally by adding new nodes with, with another single click, and all these new nodes will know about each other with our service discovery mechanism, and that got cut. So, um, so now I open up for discussion for any Q and A's. If you guys have any questions, before that, I would like to call upon stage my colleague Umer, Umer Mufti. He's a manager, data services team. Sorry? Uh, as I explained in my previous slide, uh, we just create this dynamic DNS entries for the deployment while the time of deployment and all the instances that connect to, you know, that, that gets deployed connect to the DNS server and they learn about each other. what type of databases we use? Okay, we use pretty much all the databases, so <laughs> I should be answering which databases we don't use. So to give, you a quick, uh, to give you a quick answer for that, for relational, we use Oracle, Postgres, MySQL, and... SQL Server. Yes, yeah, SQL, SQL Server. Server. And uh, because I'm a NoSQL guy, I'll better answer what NoSQL databases we use. We use Cassandra, Mongo, Couchbase, Elasticsearch, Redis, and uh, we started using graph databases like Neo, DSC Graph. We use Janus Graph too. Cockroach DB. Cockroach DB. <laughs> Anything you can think of. So we, we basically have the philosophy that, um, so we're on the ops side, obviously. Our R&D team is pretty big, and we want, we have this micro uh, microservices philosophy, so any, any particular database that suits the developer's need, we want to be able to provide them, provide them on demand. So um, this Couchbase as a service that you see here is actually part of a bigger platform, which is our database as a service. And 
any type of database that we support, we basically make sure it meets specific types of uh, uh, specifications so that we can deploy on demand a Postgres instance, a Couchbase instance, or whatever it happens to be. So basically, developers come to us, say, we would like, we would like to use this particular type of database, and it's our job to make that happen. So our, our, we have four DBAs, <laughs> and we manage over 200 <laughs> clusters. So, yeah. Yeah. This guy's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question up front. What are the typical applications that's running on Couchbase and Microsoft? So, um, again, so we're, we, we're a microservices shop. Um, essentially, what, what we do is, um, we, obviously, we make movies. Our artists uh, are working in all sorts of custom tools that our uh, R&D team has built. Each of those services connects back up to a service, so nothing is connecting directly to a database. Um, these, these services that are being connected to will handle all, all, sorts, of, all sorts of processes that uh, represent different parts of the, the pipeline in our, in our uh, movie production pipeline, right? So it could be uh, pulling down files from, um, we have a whole abstraction layer for where our digital assets are, are located. Uh, there are things with handing off uh, work from, tasks of work from one set of artists to another. And these are all represented in various services. And again, so each of the requirements for each service is very specific and, and the, re the database requirements might be specific. So a document store like Couchbase makes sense for some things. Um, uh, a, a, you know, a search engine like Elasticsearch will make sen sense for other things. Uh, yes and no. So when I started, when I started at uh, DreamWorks three and a half years ago, we were completely an Oracle shop. Um, everything we did at that time was completely relational, um, and a lot of times it meant, you know, jamming round pegs into square holes or square pegs into round holes. Um, so as I've been there, we've slowly migrated stuff off of Oracle, somewhat due to cost concerns and somewhat due to architectural concerns. And we've also, at that time, been adopting a, a microservices approach where we've broken down a lot of these bigger monolithic applications into smaller pieces. In, in cases where it makes sense to move to a non-relational technology, we have. In cases where it makes sense to keep things in a relational uh, data store, we've primarily chosen Postgres, but we're also looking at things like CockroachDB and, and other solutions as well. Right here. Um, so, none of our, none of our services are actually connecting, um, they're using the same service discovery mechanism that we use, which is basically DNS. So we dynamically update our DNS servers, or our DNS records, so that they're always accurately representing what nodes are actually online. Um, so if things, if, so there's, there's a requirement on the service side that they need to be resilient enough to a temporary connections. Uh, or learn cluster topology. Um, in the case of, of Couchbase, obviously anytime there's a, a cluster change, the cluster map gets pushed to the, uh, to the server side, to the client, to the driver. Uh, so most of our services are built in such a way that they automatically detect uh, any changes to the, to the cluster topology. <laughs> that would be a whole uh, another presentation. We have a, a completely in-house um, system called Athena, which is uh, completely built in-house for all servicing metrics for all of our applications, services, and um, providing sort of a single pane of glass for, for all the uh, KPIs. Question? All right, I think that's it. Yeah. All right, thank you.